Welcome back. It is Friday, June 7th in the MLB, and my four favorite picks are on the way. What's going on, everyone? It's Logan from Calling Our Shot. We made it to the end of the week. Let's make some money today on this fine Friday. Before we dive into today's picks, let's talk about yesterday, because making money, yeah, we did it. Three in one day, finally got out of the rut of like the two and two, three and three type picks that we were having. Let's talk about the, the picks real quick. With the hit parlay, that was pretty an easy cash. Mount Castle got his hit. Jose Ramirez got a home run. So that that definitely was a great cash there. We have Lopez, Pablo Lopez, under five and a half hits allowed. Now, guys, you told me he gave up seven earned runs. I would have said absolutely no way he went under his hits allowed. But the crazy thing about baseball is he did it. It was just a lot of walks, a lot of just terrible pitching from Pablo Lopez. But that's okay. I didn't say he needed to pitch well. I just said he needed to not allow six hits. And he did just that. We also had the Oakland Athletics uh, no run first inning. That was an easy that was an easy cash, right? No, it wasn't. It was sweaty leadoff double. You had the runner on third, one out. Great, great pitching in that one um, from Brian Wu to get us out of that one. And then our only loss of the day was Cal Quantrill over and outs, which I have no regrets about that pick because if we got it at plus value, obviously Cal Quantrill pitched really well. The problem is he just didn't pitch deep into that game. He actually recorded the win. So you would have got amazing value on a Quantrill to record a, a win prop. But it, he did not get the, the outs we needed. That's okay, guys. We'll take the profit and we will move. And hopefully we continue that today. And if we don't, I'm doing the exact same thing that I did yesterday. $25 giveaway opportunity for you in the comments. The only requirements are, one, you must be subscribed to this channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button free to do so. And then also go down, comment your favorite pick of the day. It can be my one of my picks. It can be one of your picks. Just go comment a play. And if I do not have a winning day, which yesterday I made the exact ultimatum, it sparked a three in one day. If I do not have a winning day, which I have four picks, so I either have to go four and oh, which I'd love, or three and one at worst, I will give away uh, the $25 to a random uh, comment in there that tells me their favorite play. So go down, definitely do that. I think it's a good habit to do so anyway because we can see what the community is rolling with. You guys can bounce ideas off of each other. That's what the YouTube comments are there for. Uh, not talk about my picks all the time. I mean, I'd love to hear some of you guys' because you guys are really smart as well. Now, let's let's go into today's picks. And it starts, as always, with the parlay of the day. We run these Monday through Friday on Odds Checker. It'll be posted later this morning. I've not quite looked at the hitters yet. But I'm going to find two hitters that I really do like today to each get a, a hit. And we'll continue rolling with those. Easy cash yesterday. Hopefully you can do that. Again, come back to the pinned comment uh, when it is live. Or if you follow us on Twitter, we also tell you when it's live there as well. Now, let's let's dive into, besides that that uh, parlay of the day, I also have a money line for you. You guys know I'm rolling with my Reds. Reds on the money line, minus 106 odds on FanDuel is your best value there. I love I love back in the Cincinnati Reds. And I I mean, why not? They've been so good to our, our bankroll. They've been one of the few teams I've been able to count on most days this year. And let's talk about why I like them. The Reds have won five in a row. I wish I would have, you know, been on them all five of those games in the win streak, but I was on them several times. Tonight, I'm declaring they make it six in a row against Justin Steele and the Cubs. Now, who's starting though for the Reds? Because I like to start in order of you know how these pitchers come out. It's going to be Nick Lodolo starting for the Reds. 3.11 ERA and a .99 whip. Lodolo just faced the Cubs, went six innings, pitched two earned runs. Reds ended up winning that game that Lodolo did start. I really like that. I, I really like Lodolo. I like his matchup, too, because in 57 plate appearances, the Cubs are hitting 261 off Lodolo, which is a, a decent average. But I want to point out that the expected batting average in that and all those plate appearances is only a 191. So the, the, the expected numbers are telling us that the Cubs are getting a little bit lucky against Lodolo. And I think Lodolo is, is one of those pitchers that's never priced quite like an ace, but he, he definitely can, can have really solid outings. And we look at this Cubs team, 18th in batting average, 21st in OPS versus lefties. This offense has not been consistent against left-handed pitching. They've went through ups and downs where they've hit lefties really well. And then they've also went through downs when they just can't see lefties at all. What I do know on the year is that the Cubs only four and eight versus lefty starters this year as a team, their record wise. I think this is a great bet to make. I think the I think Lodolo comes out and, and absolutely shuts them down. And then on the other side, we've got Justin Steele starting for the Cubs, 4.1 ERA 
and a 1.21 whip. Everyone loved backing Steele last year. And I think the price of this game kind of reflects that. The fact that this is a pick em, maybe Red's slightly favored on some books, slightly underdogs on others. I just think when we look at Justin Steele, he's a different pitcher this year uh, post his little injury. In 69 plate appearances, the Reds are hitting three, 339 against Justin Steele, which is ridiculous. I mean, they're seeing him well. And second time around in a short span, they should be able to do so, a lot more damage because Steele just faced the Reds. He went five innings pitched, five runs. Only one of them was earned. So his stats look a little bit deceiving. He allowed, still allowed seven hits, also gave up four walks in that start. The damage could have been a lot more against Justin Steele. The stats are just kind of weird in that one because of the, the error that happened in that one. I really think this this Reds team comes out and, and hits Justin Steele. Look at the righties uh, on the year, too. They're hitting 266 against Steele. The right, there will be several right-handed bats in this lineup. Obviously, De La Cruz is a switch hitter. He'll be batting from the right side of the plate. You've got Spencer Steer, got Tyler Stevenson, et cetera. Justin India, or <laughs> Justin, Jonathan India facing Justin Steele. Twisted there. I really think the Reds Reds get some hits and runs up on, on Justin Steele. And this Reds offense, you don't want to mess with them right now. They've scored five-plus runs in six out of their last seven games. You look at, obviously, yeah, Logan, they went to cores. Of course their offense performed there. Not every offense does perform there. This Reds offense is still clicking. They're scoring runs early in games, and they're scoring runs in the late game, giving their team a chance to win. And I mentioned in the late game, you can never count the Reds out of these games, especially in the bullpens, right? Yesterday was a close game, early-ish. Back and forth, back and forth. Who pulled away? It was the Reds because their offense really shines in the late game. They, they shine for us in the Rockies. Crazy game as well. Cincinnati, 13th in bullpen ERA. Cubs, 23rd in bullpen ERA. There's a reason I like backing this Reds team is because I really do actually like their bullpen. I think they're underrated. And I think the Cubs bullpen is, is pretty trash. I mean, I'm going to call it how I see it. I don't think the Cubs, if you're backing the Cubs, you ever feel good seeing their, their rotation come in after the starter. I just think the Reds is a solid bet to make in this one. Obviously, you got a Friday night home. T- you you got a home crowd behind you. A lot of energy on that Reds team. I love backing them. And I, and I pick them price. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot on them tonight. They've been great to us. Why not? Let's go into a, a, our next pick, though. It is a player prop. Yesterday, we, we had success, success with a hits allowed prop. So I'm back on one today. And it's Logan Allen of the Guardians. Under five and a half hits allowed. Minus 105 odds on DraftKings. Is your best value now? Obviously, Logan Allen, great first name, but I do like his under five and a half hits allowed. Let's just talk about kind of why I like this market. We saw yesterday with Pablo Lopez, right? You can have a pitcher come out and have a really, really bad start and not allow six hits. I mean, that's that's just kind of how it is. It's a weird, it's a weird market, but it's a market I think we can find success in. Like Pablo Lopez yesterday, though. You look at Logan Allen, he's over this line frequently. He's over this line in five out of his last six starts. That's why the number has to be at five and a half. You can't do, I mean, you could do a line reading, I guess. If if this number was four and a half, you would say, oh, he definitely he soars under. But they have to put it at five and a half just because of how frequently he's going over. But again, in, in this matchup, though, I like the under, and I think I think you'll see why. I'm playing this under against a bad Marlins offense against lefties. Not that it matters, but the Marlins are only 2-19 and 19 against lefty starters this year. They're terrible. Marlins also only hitting 184 in their last five games versus lefties. 223 on the season, 26th in the major leagues. This team just cannot consistently hit lefties. Every now and then they'll have a game where they just explode against a lefty, and it's rare. But you're looking at just season averages and even what they've been doing recently – I got to take the under in this one. Allen also allowing a 200 batting average with two outs and a runner in scoring position. Now, why does that matter? Well, because even if a runner is on, he should be able to stop the bleeding. You can't have these pitchers with a high batting average allowed with runners in scoring position because then that's how you get the hit parade. That's how that's how they you know they just get a little nervous. They're pitching out of the stretch at, or they're not pitching out of the stretch, and they just they that's how the the hits really escalate in that one. As bad as Pablo Lopez pitched last night, remember. He still did not allow six hits. And then the Marlins, we look at the, the kind of lines in this game. Marlins only have a one and a half first five team total, which is usually indicative of a favorable pitching matchup uh, for the, the pitcher in that one. The, these books normally, if they if they think the starter is going to get rocked, you'd see this line typically at two and a half. Now, obviously, the one and a half is juiced, 
But I still think Logan Allen has a lot of pathways to go under five and a half hits. Again, Logan Allen could walk so many people. He could have a very inefficient game pitch count wise, kind of like Lopez did last night and still go under the five and a half. I just think six hits is asking a lot against the Marlins offense that just hasn't been able to hit uh, left-handed pitching consistently. Give me, the, give me Logan Allen under five and a half hits. Love that bet. And I love that it's not crazy juiced as well. Now, we had a Nerfy Nation had a dub yesterday. How about we continue that today? Get those flags out, play the rock music. Okay. Nerfy Nation is going to the battle of the Sox. Red Sox and White Sox, no run first inning. Minus 135 on bet 365 is your best value. Now, if you're looking at this book, or if you're looking at this bet on your book, it could be juiced, especially by the time you're watching this video. If you want to, if you want to pass on the nerfy, a juice nerfy, I get it. Okay. I don't normally like playing them anything over like minus 135. This is about my cutoff. If this was minus 140, I would probably just not play it. I just I can't bet crazy juice nerfies. It's just a you know, it's in my head. But I really like this one. I really like the matchup. And when I saw this matchup, I was like, got to target it. Garrett Crochet starts for the White Sox. Crochet, 12-1 and one on Nerfies. He's just been so good in the first inning. And he faces an interesting matchup. The Red Sox, 12th in first inning runs. Obviously, this team can score in the first inning. They scored a bazillion runs yesterday. Obviously, Garrett Crochet will have his work cut out for him. But he's tough to see in the first inning. I think he gets the first three outs we need. And then it's on Cooper Criswell, starting for the Red Sox. Criswell, 7-2 and two on Nerfies. Pretty solid uh, numbers for Cooper Criswell. He's not an ace pitcher, not, not going not gonna to command that sort of attention. But again, his matchup, he's facing the White Sox, who are 25th in first inning runs. Runs in the first inning are few and far between for this White Sox team. Hopefully we can continue that today. Cooper Criswell, go do your job. Get us those last three outs we need. I think this is a solid bet to make. I just love both these, these two starting pitchers and their matchups. Nerfie Nation, let's fly the flags. Cash another one. Yesterday was sweaty. Hopefully this one is not as sweaty. That'll do it for the picks today, though. Let's do a quick recap of what we're rolling with. Parlay of the day. Post it later this morning. Come back the, in the pinned comment or video description. Check that one out. Then we got the Reds on the money line. Of course I'm rolling with the Reds. We got Logan Allen under five and a half hits allowed. And then we have the Red Sox and White Sox. No run for stinning I just talked about. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully we can continue to make some money going into the weekend. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.